Hi, I'm Robin Leopoldo, and I am the Communications Manager at Bentwater Brewing. I've been here for about three and a half years. Hi, my name is Ryan Nestor. I'm the Director of Sales, and I've been with Bentwater since early of 2016. Uh, and I'm Adam Denigola. I'm the Head Brewer at Bentwater Brewing Company. Uh, I've been with the company just over four years. So today we're going to talk about water and the importance of water, not only in, a, in our environment, but also in the brewing process. Some people would think that a brewery wouldn't have much interest in Boston Harbor or the coastline, but water is actually a very important resource for brewing. Right, Adam? That's correct, Robin. Um, you know, the four main ingredients of beer, uh, hops, barley, yeast, and uh, water, um, water actually makes up the vast majority of what beer is. Uh, upwards of 95% of beer is water. Uh, so it is something that we're very concerned about uh, environmentally wise, but also as like you know, the quality coming into the brewery for the brewing process itself. Um, and with the Boston Harbor, you know, we're not getting our water, obviously it's salt water from the ocean, but you know, conservation of water in general is something that, you know, is near dear to our hearts and something we think about on a regular basis. So, Adam, sometimes breweries have to do some water treatment before actually using the water. Could you talk a little bit about that process? Sure. Uh, so the water we have in Lynn is a very nice brewing water. Um, there's not really too much going on with it, which is actually really nice because it gives us a really nice platform to work off of. Um, and for us, basically, we filter it just to get the chlorine that the city puts into it to keep the sanitary out of it. Um, but, you know, in other parts of the country, places like Florida, you know, their groundwater doesn't taste nearly as good as ours does, and they have to do a lot of extra additional treatment to it. Um, you know, reverse osmosis, that kind of thing, to really strip the water totally down to its uh, base molecules and then build it back up with minerals. Um, and, you know, and Lynn, we're really lucky that we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So at Bentwater, we do minimal treatment of our water before using it to brew. Ryan, was that a factor in choosing Lynn for Bentwater's site? Absolutely. When uh, when the founders uh, were looking um, for a place to set up shop, uh, they knew it would be somewhere on the North Shore, and, and Lynn was a, a very easy um, easy destination because of the private water uh, treatment facility that was um, implemented, um, I believe, in 1978. It was federally funded by, at, the, at the, that point, President uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. So our location in Lynn is very close to the water. We're about a block from the ocean and we have a lot of water sources within Lynn. Given that and our reliance on water, we're very protective of it as a natural resource. Some people are surprised to hear how much wastewater comes out of breweries. Adam, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, uh, the Brewers Association is a trade group in the United States and they collect a lot of data about the water usage uh, for craft breweries across the country. And uh, the most recent data that they've uh, been collecting indicates that on average, most craft breweries use about uh, 10 barrels of water to make one barrel of beer uh, and one barrel is 31 gallons. So, you know, that's a huge, huge amount of water that goes into making a relatively small amount of liquid that actually leaves the brewery as beer. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> conservation of water and making sure that, you know, you're being smart about how you're using water is something, you know, that's very conscious and always on, our, on the forefront of our minds at the brewery. So, Adam, what are some of the actual steps that Bentwater is taking to ensure that what we take out of the environment is put back just as clean? Uh, so, beyond just being conscious of how much water we're using on a regular basis, uh, last year with the completion of our expansion, uh, beyond just expanding our physical capacity for brewing, we will go ahead, uh, went ahead and decided to install a uh, water treatment facility on site that pre-treats our wastewater before it goes back to the city. Um, in that process, we're filtering out the solids, uh, you know, grain, hops that have made it down the drain, um, but most importantly, we're removing the majority of the yeast that's coming out of the tanks. And uh, yeast has a pretty big impact on the Lynn's sewer treatment facility's ability to treat the water in the city. Uh, they do use bacteria to break down, you know, components that have been put down to the sewers. And when we're discharging that much amount of yeast into the system, it really messes up the biological balance that they have going on that allows them to treat the water effectively. Uh, so removing that yeast is a really good way for us to return the water in an effective and clean manner to the, to the city. 
Um, and then in addition to removing the solids, we're also pH neutralizing uh, whatever's leaving the facility. We use a lot of alkaline and acidic cleaners, heavily, heavily, heavily um, by the way, in the pH scale. So our goal is to return the water back at a neutral state so it's uh, less stressful in the water treatment center, uh, city's water treatment system. Well, it's pretty obvious that we love water around here. It's even in the name. Ryan, can you share where the name Bentwater came from? Sure. The, the name Bentwater, sort of, uh, as Adam had said before, beer is made up of 95% uh, water. And, and, you know, bending ingredients into um, water creates an elixir. And that's how we came up with the name Bentwater. Could you also share a little bit about the history of Bentwater and how it was formed? Sure. Uh, Bentwater was found, founded by, um, you know, a, a couple local friends. Uh, you know, the idea was in, you know, 2010, 2011, and the first, uh, you know, beer was brewed in, er, in late November of 2015 um, in Lynn. Well, we've talked about the water and some of the process, but we haven't talked much about the beers. Adam, could you share a little bit about the beers at Bentwater? Yeah, of course. Um, so actually in front of me here, I have uh, five different beers that we produce on a regular basis. Uh, these are basically our five year-round beers. Um, we have Thunder Funk, which was one of the original beers that we launched with, which is our West Coast inspired IPA. Uh, and it's bigger sibling, Double Thunder Funk, which is a double IPA, so higher alcohol, more hops kind of thing going on there. Also West Coast inspired. Um, and then we also have Slew Shoes, which is our New England IPA. Uh, you know, that's hazy, very, very aromatic hops. Uh, and then it's bigger sibling. It doesn't share the same name like the Thunder Fox, but Equivalent Exchange is a double New England IPA. Super juicy, super fruity. Um, and then last year we released Premium Lager, uh, which is, you know, our intended to be gateway beer. It's a uh, American uh, corn lager. Uh, it's light, easy to drink, something, you know, that, uh, you know, maybe a person who likes a Bud Light might be interested in trying and, you know, could introduce them to uh, Ben Water beers. Thanks, Adam. So, Ryan, where can we find these Bentwater beers? So, when, when we had started in, in 2016 distributing, we, um, we primarily distributed in the North Shore, slowly worked our way into Boston, the South Shore, and the Cape. And fast forward to uh, 2019, we signed an agreement uh, to distribute our beer throughout New Hampshire. And in later 2019, and the beginning of this year, 2020, we, um, we fully launched into the entire state of Massachusetts. So you can find our beer um, throughout Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And if you have any specific locations that you go to, you can um, go to our webpage uh, and you can click on the find, uh, find our beer and uh, it should pull up on a map. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you, Adam, for joining me today and sharing a little bit about the history of bent water as well as the importance of water in our industry. Thanks, Robin. Thank you.